there's a ton of noise out there. So how do you get decision makers to pay attention to your brand? Start a podcast and invite your ideal clients to be guests on your show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. Today, we are joined by Jeff Brodsley. Jeff is the president and CEO of Chosen Payments. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate the welcome. It's a pleasure to get to talk to you today. Um, You and your company, you've been, you've you've seen a tremendous amount of growth recently. And one of the reasons that we wanted to talk today about this idea of scaling and loyalty, and you've you've obviously seen it firsthand. It's very fresh uh, in your mind. So I'm excited to talk about today's topic. But before we get into that, Jeff, maybe you can tell us just a little bit about uh, sort of what you and the Chosen Payments team are up to these days. Yeah, well, I appreciate you selecting me, Jonathan, and um, hopefully I can add some value to the to the uh, listeners and the, and the the people that you know tune into the show. Um, yeah, so chosen payments in general, we're a we're a technology based payment processing company. Um, just at the highest level, the elevator pitch I would say is you know every merchant in America needs um, someone like us to accept electronic payments, aka credit cards, and um, what differentiated us from the cutthroat industry that we're in is just doing a, a, a consultative sale that is more based on technology solutions. So instead of just selling based on price, we sell on value and we really we look at quality versus quantity. So what we've been up to is just looking for ways to attack different vertical markets, somebody that um, a, a specific industry where we can become an expert in the industry itself. They might have some inefficiencies with their um, processes, whether it be credit card processing related or just financial business consulting related. And we like to come in via our technology, proprietary and technology solutions that are integrated into payments and really help them cut costs directly um, by reducing their credit card processing fees, but also completely cut costs from an overhead standpoint of leveraging technology to to be more efficient so we're just you know what we're up to these days is is continuing to build the company with substantial year-over-year growth but selecting our clients as opposed to just going after and trying to be everything to everybody yeah absolutely well and we uh we, we're certainly thrilled um for your success for your growth again one of the reasons that we wanted to reach out to you specifically i know that uh chosen payments has been on the inc 5000 list of fastest growing companies, which is tremendous. And we are going to be talking about, again, this idea of scaling and loyalty. I think that our listeners are going to get a tremendous amount of value out of today's episode. But why don't we start kind of at the beginning with this idea of when do you know when to scale up versus scale down? What a, let's, let's take it away, Jeff. So it's a, it's a, it's a question that we could try to talk about for for five hours, but from an entrepreneurial standpoint, from a standpoint of building a company from the ground up to where it is today, and just to put things into perspective so people even know, I mean, we have you know, over 130 people employed and we'll process over $5 billion in credit card sales um, with, you know, utmost of 15,000 15, clients and, you know, uh, across America from small mom and pop to, to large enterprise clients, but just so people can put it into perspective, but started as a one man show and we scale. The question is what, you know, when, when to scale up versus when to scale down, it's hard because as an entrepreneur at heart, you're, you're a salesperson and you just are. Um, and so you're always looking for opportunities. And once you start becoming 
you know, successful. It's, it's either you, you know, you, you either fail or you make it as a small business and then you try to go from a small business to a medium sized business and then maybe a medium sized business to a larger business or anywhere in between. And there's opportunities to scale that entire time. And for me, I've always had to look at, you know, what is the, what is the effect on the overall company if I choose to scale or not? So if I have an opportunity to acquire new accounts or new business, but I don't have the proper infrastructure in place to do that, then I'd potentially just be, be uh, being a sales guy and not a, not an entrepreneur business owner. And I'd be, you know, taking short term, you know, pleasure for, mm. for longer term pain. And that's not the way to scale. So from my perspective, I like to make sure that the house is built properly first, and everything's in fine working order. And then we start looking at more opportunities. As a business owner and someone successful in whatever business you run, if you're successful as a doctor, as a restaurant owner, as a you know merchant service provider like I am, you're going to have opportunity after opportunity. But instead of just trying to take advantage of all of them, you got to look at your opportunity cost. You got to look at the 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 opportunity, the time it takes to win that opportunity, the stress level that it will add or take off of your staff. And all of those, as opposed to just what does it do to my bottom line? So I think you scale up when you believe that that your house is built and the foundation's there and you're ready to remodel your kitchen and you don't scale up when you are still trying to figure out who you want to be and where you want to be. And you're not certain that if you take on the opportunity that you might not be able to deliver the quality of product and service that you do generally deliver. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and and, and it's got to be tough. It's got to require a level of self awareness of wherewithal to say, "Hang on, you know, I is is scaling up the right move." I mean, I've got this opportunity, but let's take it like you said. Let's take a look at at the house, at the foundation. Are we are we ready for this? So I think that's I think that's great advice when you're trying to consider you know, when to scale up versus scale down. The second part of this and that we're going to be getting into just a little bit is, you know, how do you know then which areas of your business to scale and when? What does that look like, Jeff? Yes. So to backtrack one sec, and then we'll go to that. I'll, and I'll move to the answer that because I think it, 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 it's a perfect segue is, you know, there's there's areas of, of scaling a business that could be just growth related or there is just just growth when I mean to revenue bottom line, or because areas that of scaling should be operational driven. So we're I'm focused on you know on this specific interview of just kind of how to grow the bottom line when I say scale, but one has to go with the other. You know you can't grow your your revenue um, without adding something to support your clients if you're in a a service oriented product or service oriented business. So I can't tell you how many business owners I know that you know, are, are ego driven and it's good to be an entrepreneur. I mean, everyone has an ego. That's what makes a really solid entrepreneur. You know, it's no <laughs> secret that it's no secret that the most successful entrepreneurs are, have some sort of narcissism and ego. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Um, it's just, it, you know, it's, it, as long as you recognize it and you know, you know how to use it in the proper way, I think, it, I think it's smart, but no, I, I can't tell you how many business owners are out there and they just talk about, Oh, I do X amount of sales and I do this much volume. And they, they just talk about, you know, how much they've scaled. But to me, I, none of that matters because what matters to me is bottom line. If you have, uh, let's say you are a limousine company owner, which is one of the vertical markets that we focus on. There's a lot of company owners that out there that they, they view their business on, oh, well, I, I own 300 limousines. And I always laugh because to my perspective, I don't care how many limos you own, how many are actually on the road generating revenue. I'd rather own mm. 40 limos doing more revenue than I would 300 doing less revenue. So, so how do you know what areas to scale in? I think we, every business should be compartmentalized into what areas of income do you have and what areas of expense do you have? Any business is just line items, like straight income and straight expense and not breaking it down in my mind, isn't doing the right thing. And then you back into that one step further and you say, how do I increase my margin and how do I decrease my OPEX, my operating expenses? And that's how I would recommend scaling up or scaling down. Wherever there's room for growth, if you see an area that in the past, I mean, we all know, especially with technology and just in general evolution, things change daily, monthly, weekly. 
And you should definitely be at least be doing, you know, quarterly reviews of your business, but look at the de- different business aspects, the different aspects of your business and segments, which ones have the biggest growth, not only biggest growth in volume, but biggest net profit bottom line or, or biggest overall impact to the company. And why did that? What, what did we do right? And how easy is it to replicate that? And then you look at some and say, okay, these may not be working anymore because it, just technology has taken over that, 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 that piece of human interaction or the market isn't calling for XYZ product anymore. So I think you really analyze what you offer. You look at all your products, you compartmentalize them, and then you determine, A, where have you had the most traction? And B, where can you add the, the largest increase in distribution, which AKA means you know, increase to, to, to your, your bottom line, or where can you scale by decreasing your operating costs via leveraging technology or, or smarter people paying? I'd rather pay someone more money that, that can do the job of three people than, you know, someone less money that I have to pay for three of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I, and I love that you kind of used this example with the uh, idea of, of vanity metrics, you know, like, look at how many, look at how many of these widgets, these limos I have, but, you know, let's, let's take a, let's take a critical look at, you know, beyond that in very impressive, large number, you know, where is the actual revenue coming from? You know, how much of this is, you know, what, and it, and it speaks exactly to this idea of which areas you should be scaling. So I love the fact that you use that. And, and Jeff, so, you know, even beyond then, you know, this when to scale up and down, which areas to scale up and down, part of scaling, as you've seen firsthand, obviously, is, uh, you know, hiring the right staff, the right kind of employees. So what are your thoughts then on this idea of loyalty and how does it relate to scaling? Okay, so, and this is from, you know, experience, I, I think I would say most successful Hopefully not, but I think it's proven that most successful um, people have been through some bad divorces when it comes to business, whether it be partners or friends or whatnot. So first things first, I always tread on you know the side of caution of doing business with friends or family. And if you do do business with friends and family, it's very, very, very clear and defined. If it's not, what's happened in my experience is it, it, it leads to resentment and entitlement on either resentment on, say, my part as the owner and entitlement on the friends or family standpoint. So going into a relationship, with a business relationship, whether they are a friend or family or not, having, so to, answer the, to answer the question about loyalty, having very precise expectations and just, just a grown-up conversation in any relationship, whether it's a personal relationship, whether it's your family, the most communication you can have, the better. So just a precise expectation. If I'm hiring someone, this is what I expect out of you. What do you think you need from me in order to do your job? Let's talk about it. Let's socialize it. Okay, let's put it in writing. Let's document it and let's review it. So that's one thing of, of bringing the people in the right way of telling them, hey, I expect this out of you and them saying, okay, I can do this. Or if not, them saying I can do an even better job and changing the metrics to be higher. And maybe we can give them a bonus based on that. Maybe we Someone might say, oh, I'm not sure I can do that job, but at least the, the paths are clear. Then when it comes to loyalty, I feel very fortunate that a lot of my career I have to give to, to my staff. I mean, they have been so loyal. And I think it starts with, I think it honestly starts, I have to start at the top, but it starts with something that, you know, one of my mentors taught me years ago. And I can't remember the exact statistics. I want to say it's about every household in America has I think it's two and a half, a two and a half people to two and a half to three people. So, as for me as a CEO and owner of a company, I look at every person in there that I'm responsible to make sure that I'm feeding and putting a roof over three people's heads for every one person in there. And if I have that mentality, then I, that means I care about them as an individual. If I show them that I care about them as an individual, they're gonna in turn care about me as a boss. Which most importantly then translate to them caring about the client and giving the client the experience they deserve. So I think when we, when we humanize ourselves and, and, and create a personal interaction, even for me running a, you know, a medium-sized company right now, it's very hard to come in the office, 
have 20 different conference calls that I'm waiting on, have a million emails and say hi to everybody. But I do my best. But I think what my staff does know is when the, what, what they need me, when they need me, I have an open door policy. And creating that is not easy as you scale because a lot of people forget about where they came from. So when you remember that the, the, the girl that's now running my operations department was once my receptionist, that's, that's huge. And that yeah. builds loyalty and that culture then runs throughout the company. So I think it's a combination of, of treating people right, actually caring about your employees, not looking at them as employees, but looking at them as family members, people that you want to make sure are successful. And as you grow, you want them to grow with you and then make sure that they're transferring that energy into a co company culture that then the clients feel. It's story time again, and we're talking about search engine marketing. Today, I'm going to tell you about a challenge within Pelican Case's B2B division. Pelican needed a partner with deep B2B expertise that could get them a massive bump in leads from their pay-per-click campaigns without increasing spend. After vetting a handful of agencies, they decided to go with Directive Consulting, a B2B search marketing agency located in Southern California. Directive took on this challenge by refining their targeting and building custom landing pages for their advertising efforts. Once implemented, they saw a 208% increase in conversion rate. Needless to say, Pelican cases met their initiative. And I have a hunch that Directive can get these kind of results for you too. So head over to directiveconsulting.com and request a totally free custom proposal. That's directiveconsulting.com. All right, let's get back to this interview. Yeah, well, and I mean, having that idea of uh, loyalty to to your employees, to the people that you do business with, thinking of them as family, um, you know, it's it's no surprise that that kind of inspires um, loyalty in in return, and that they want to they want to see you succeed because you're all growing together, and they want to stick with you. So that feels like a brilliant answer. And Jeff, I also think it is probably a pretty good segue into one of the last questions that we've been asking all of our guests, and I am excited to dig into this a little bit with you. And it is that this idea of legacy. And so as a as a as a business owner, as someone who has been been growing something, uh, realizing realizing a vision. You know, Jeff, for you, what what's the kind of legacy then that you are hoping to leave behind at the end of the day? Whether that is uh, personally, professionally, or even a combination of the two. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, it's definitely a, a personal question, but I think it is a combination of the two. And it's you know, humbly speaking, I, I came from you know, I didn't come from an amazing you know, uh, trust fund upbringing and not that I have anything against that. I just, I didn't, I haven't had the easiest path of life. I've been throwing some curveballs, And so, you know, I, I think that I've, to be where I'm at today, given the hand I was dealt, I feel extremely blessed to, to have friends, family, and just, I guess my own drive to get me there. So when we talk about legacy and, you know, now I have a, a daughter, I have a four-year-old daughter, and that's the most important thing to me in the entire world. I can, you know, make twenty billion dollars is not going to be you know more important than showing up at my daughter's you know softball game or whatever it may be when she's old enough for that. But so for me, I would say it's twofold. Leaving a legacy is a because I didn't come from anything. Not that I you know my parents were bad parents or I had a horrible childhood, but I didn't come from money. I want to leave a legacy for my family and anyone attached that they that they can benefit of the fruits of my labor, but they're not going to. Uh, humbly speaking, they're not getting handed crap. Like, <laughs> like they're, they're going to work. Like if they, you know, if they want to be a part of the company, that's fine. And they will have first crack at everything and anything, but they're not going to get handed anything because I didn't get handed anything. And those that I know that does do get handed stuff are the worst business owners and the most entitled and they don't have that loyalty. So the legacy I want to leave is the opportunity for my, the closest people in my life that could be friends, family, or that could be staff to really have the opportunity to take what I've done and what I've built and just continue to grow it. That's a, that's a business slash personal side on the, on the business alone side. It goes back to the comment that I make that I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm feeding as many mouths as I can feed. And these people are as happy as possible. So, I mean, I don't like to think about, you know, I'm still a young guy. I don't like to think about a legacy as me passing away, but I like to think of a legacy as what am I building and who can benefit from what I'm building and, from my perspective, I'd like to, I'd like to you know see the the people that have stood by me when things were really bad in life 
have an opportunity to 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 eat the fruits of 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 the labor that I've put in, and I think that I'd like to give the opportunity for anybody that cares about me to to work, but they're not going to get handed anything, but they're going to you know have a a foot in the door, um, and you know most importantly is just making sure my daughter's set, you know, she making sure she she's set, and she's taken care of, and and uh, and she's able to live a life that you know I didn't necessarily have as a child. I have today, but not an entitled life, not a not a a, a brat life, but you know, <laughs> a, 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 a finer things traveling the world style life, but out of full blown appreciation of where she came from. Yeah, absolutely. Not a not a handout, a uh, an opportunity. So um, that sounds like a that sounds like a yeah, tremendous. I have her doing chores already at and earning allowance at four at four. Just to teach her that money isn't free. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. You have to you have to build that character early on. I think that's a smart move. Yeah. So uh, it sounds like it sounds like a great legacy, Jeff. Um, obviously, we wish you uh, continued success with your company. We've been tech- talking with Jeff Brodsley again, the president and CEO of Chosen Payments. Jeff, this has I you know. I, I predicted it. It says this has been uh, some tremendous content. If any of our listeners are interested and they want to find out more about today's topic, they want to connect with you, they want to find out more about chosen payments, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Yeah, so I think any listener out there, I think there's two things to touch on. Any listener out there that is a is a merchant that accepts credit cards, I, will, I would love to consult with you to make sure that you're not leaving anything on the table. Financially, technology, just make sure you're at the top. So in that scenario, Reach directly out to me, Jeff B as boy at chosen payments with an S dot com. You can do research by going straight to our website at www.chosenpayments.com. And then since I really didn't, you know, come from much and, and much of my success is geared towards me being very humble in the beginning of my career and asking people to mentor me and give me advice and so on and so forth. I want to pay it forward and anybody and everyone out there that you know, wants to pick my brain on anything, I'm more than happy to. And they can, again, come straight to me, Jeff B at chosenpayments.com. I'm busy, but I will tell you right now that one of the most fulfilling things for me in life is paying it forward and watching others be successful. So I'm more than happy to, to welcome anyone that wants to speak with me. Well, that's fantastic. I, uh, I appreciate you making time for our, our listeners, and I really appreciate you making time to, to join us here on the show today. Jeff, it was an absolute pleasure getting to interview you. Thank you so much. Sounds good. Thanks, Jonathan. Take care. There are lots of ways to build a community, and we've chosen to build the B2B growth community through this podcast. But because of the way podcasts work, it's really hard to engage with our listeners. And without engagement, it's tough to build a great community. So here's what we've decided to do. We're organizing small dinners across the country with our listeners and guests. No sales pitches, no agenda, Just great conversations with like-minded people. We'll talk business. We'll talk family. We'll talk goals and dreams. We'll build friendships. So if you'd like to be a part of a B2B Growth Dinner in a city near you, go to b2bgrowthdinners.com. That's b2bgrowthdinners.com. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.